I am Ajibin Drame, and this is QTV Midday News coming to you live from our studios on Keraba Avenue and thanks for joining us. Our top stories. There has been a dramatic tone of events in the Gambia's presidential race. Dr. Ismail Assisi of the Citizens Alliance, one of the candidates disqualified by the Electoral Commission, wins the case against his disqualification and is cleared to run. The NPP-led Grand Coalition on Tuesday resumed its election campaign tour in Fonyi, West Coast region. The Office of National Security and the Ministry of Interior and Partners on Monday organized a peace and election forum for grassroots communities. A five-day training course for journalists on the role of media in peace building and conflict prevention in elections was organized on Monday by the Point Newspaper and Partners. In sports, history was made in Cairo over the weekend as South Africa's Mamelodi Sundowns triumphed over Ghana's Hasekas ladies to be crowned champions African women's club football. Those were our main headlines, now the news in detail. Now, Dr. Ismail Assisi, the Citizens Alliance candidate, on Tuesday won his high court petition against the decision to disqualify him from the presidential race. The court ruled the IEC had erred in its decision to rule him out of the contest. Here is an excerpt. It is yet another judgment against the Independent Electoral Commission by the High Court of the Gambia. This time, it is in favor of Citizens Alliance's presidential aspirant who had filed a petition against the electoral body for rejecting his nomination earlier this month. Amin Saho Sise is the presiding judge of the case, and she recites the judgment, stating that the IEC failed to comply with the provision of the Election Act. Having regard to the fact that the first applicant only had notice of the rejection of his nomination, contrary to the spirit of Section 473 of the Elections Act, which invariably amounts to a denial of his right to deliver a fresh nomination paper and or cure any defect in his nomination form, which is in consonance with all known rules of fairness, equity, natural justice, as envisaged in section 47 of the Elections Act. The court's judgment means that the IEC failed to comply with the procedure defined by law in the Election Act and that the constitutional right of Dr. Ismail Assisi, the Citizens' Alliance's presidential aspirant, was thereby violated. Justice Amina Saho Assisi's verdict entitles Dr. Ismail Assisi to submit to the IEC an additional list of names and signatures of registered voters for the Banjul Administrative to meet the legal requirement for his nomination by correcting his nomination papers. Four is I have directed that the applicant, the first applicant, be permitted to submit the additional list of names and signatures of registered voters for the Banjul Administrative Area, Exhibit I-7, to the returning officer, who shall first be at liberty to satisfy himself or herself that all constitutional other legal requirements have been met in accordance with Section 46 of the Act. It is only thereafter and upon service of, of Form 2 of Part A of the Court Schedule that the first applicant shall be at liberty to continue to participate in the election process leading up to the presidential election scheduled for the fourth day of December 2021 in enjoyment of his constitutional right under Section 26 of the 1997 Constitution. It is a victory for the Citizens' Alliance and its supporters who break into a jubilation mood after the landmark judgment. Dr. Ismail Assise reacts to the verdict, confirming his trust in the judiciary and his reason for challenging the ISIS to the courts. We had always had trust in the process. That is why when the nomination was rejected, we urged our supporters to be calm. Now we go to the courts. We had just trust in the justice system. We know that since New Gambia came into being, the only positive is the judiciary. And today, in this landmark ruling, it has shown that it is truly an independent institution. Well, we'll have to do a comprehensive assessment of the situation by consulting uh, our base, by consulting our structures at the constituency level, at the world level, to see whether um, there is time to see whether we can go for elections. I cannot decide that now. There will be an emergency meeting immediately after that with our, um, with our people from the regions to see, to make a comprehensive assessment as to whether we should really, what we wanted was, this is not about this election, it's about justice, it's about preventing future, somebody in the future to become a victim of such malpractice and such blatant disregard for the rule of law. Also, to clear people's doubt on the impact of this judgment, 
The judge is explicit in her verdict that it has no effect on the scheduled date for the presidential elections, stressing that the court has no power to postpone the presidential elections. On this case, the issue of jurisdiction is matter for determination, is the claim by the IEC counsel, who had claimed that the IEC has the final decision to reject nominations of applicants. The CE, however, had petitioned the IEC for violating their presidential aspirants' fundamental rights, which the High Court says it has jurisdiction over to determine. Crucial to report from today's judgment is that it is only after fulfilling the legal requirement of submission of additional list of names and signatures of registered voters for the Banyol Administrative Region as required by the Election Act that Dr. Ismail Asize can be cleared to contest in the upcoming presidential elections. Mahmoud Lamin QTV News. The NPP-led Grand Coalition on Tuesday resumed its election campaign tour in the Fonyi West Coast region. Ali Usise reports. This was the atmosphere in Kalaji Fonyi Jarul this evening as President Barrow, the candidate of the NPP-led Grand Coalition, resumed his dialogue with the People's Election Campaign Tour. The President ended his first leg of the tour in rural Gambia on Sunday and was accorded a spectacular welcome back to the State House by supporters. The second leg tour will see the President hold meetings in Fonyi, Combo, KMC and Banjol. President Barrow is seeking re-election as Gambians vote for President on 4 December. He is challenged by five other candidates. Reporting for QTV News from Kalaji in Fonyi, Jarol, I am Ali Usise. The Office of National Security and the Ministry of Interior, in, co in collaboration with the Women's Association for Victims Empowerment, WAVE, on Monday organized a peace and election forum for grassroots communities on social cohesion and resilience for peaceful elections and security. More in this report. The event, which is supported by UNDP, is important as the Gambia go to the polls on December 4th to elect a president. Priscilla Yago Sisi, Senior Technical Advisor at the Women's Association for Victims Empowerment, WAVE, says the forum is significant and will bridge the gap between civilians and the security sector to ensure peaceful coexistence. She explains the role of women in ensuring peaceful coexistence. As you know, we've come from a fractured society in terms of the history of the Gambia, as has been revealed with the TRRC process. Plus also we're going into elections coming up soon in that position of being able to understand what conflict is and how they can recognize it and their role in really preventing conflict and also just being able to participate in discussions and dialogue in their community so that it would enhance um, social cohesion as well. Babu Karso, Security Sector Reform Specialist from the UNDP, says ensuring peaceful cohesion and avoiding polarization for the election is important. He adds that the UNDP hopes that the acceleration of this agenda by stakeholders and partners is realized. The gap that exists between security and the, uh, the civilian population uh, for the gap to be reduced as significantly as possible. You may recall there was a security sector assessment in 2017 and that seemed to suggest that that gap really exists, you know, that uh, not a good relationship exists between security and, and, and the civilian population and hence the need uh, based on the recommendations from that outcome of that assessment for effort to be made to, to bridge that gap. Fanta B.S. Mane, representing the Minister of Interior, thanked partners for complementing government efforts. She adds that the forum strives to institute the spirit of institutional cohesion by building community resilience at grassroots levels. Creating dynamics of networks, of independent structures, mechanisms, resources, values and skills, driving national dialogue and consultation for building, bonding and bridging linkages between society and states markets and other institutions manually undertaking peace works for preventive conflict con resolutions in our societies. Malang Jata, Director of Policy and Planning, Office of National Security, has this to say. Coming from the uh, back hills of the uh, last 22 years of uh, rule, uh, we left a divided security sector coupled with the dwindled loss of confidence in the security sector. 
With the conclusion of the sittings of the TRRC, which calls for truth, reconciliation, and reparation, it is prudent that we sensitize each other on the need to nurture and sustain peace and stability that the Gambia is well known for and live peacefully uh, as brothers and sisters. Promoting social cohesion for peaceful coexistence in communities is significant before, during, and after this coming election. And efforts have been made to ensure the maintenance of peace during the electoral cycle. We don't have long to wait before we will know whether such efforts have borne fruit. Ajipintu Drame, QTV News. Moving on, a five-day training course for journalists on the role of media in peace building and conflict prevention in elections was organized on Monday by the Point newspaper in collaboration with Rosa Luzembox Tifong in Dakar. Fatusi Sanyang tells us more. The role of journalists in election is integral in every democratic process as the media play a crucial role in sensitizing and disseminating information to the public. This training brought together journalists from broadcasts, online and newspapers to provide them with in-depth knowledge of peace building and conflict prevention. As the Gambia edge closer to December 4th elections, Pap Sen, a veteran journalist, talks about the importance of the media, especially during elections. As everybody knows, the election is vital. Uh, December 4th polls is very vital for we media people, we journalists. It's our duty to inform, to educate the public uh, in an accuracy manner so that there will be no trouble and uh, it's our duty to have always a reliable source before we report it to the public. Jenna Nyang Jai, also a veteran journalist, has some advice for journalists. The advice I would give to young female reporters uh, during the forthcoming elections is one to know and be aware of the environment in which we are operating. Um, we have had elections in the past. Um, this one, of course, we have a lot of journalists covering, which has not happened before. Uh, so it is important for the journalists to know um, what the situation is, what is the environment, what is at stake. And, you know, another important thing is for the journalists themselves, you know, to be factual in their reporting. Mohamed M. S. Ba, the president of the Gambia Press Union, urged his participant to refrain from the promotion of hate speech. The hate speech research is one of its kind because if it has never happened in this country for the first time. Um, and then it has shown that there is increase in hate speech in the media fraternity. Um, it reveals how religion, political affiliation, ethnicity, and sexual orientation and other identification factors have become grounds for hatred and incitement of violence or discrimination against various individuals and groups in the Gambian society, which has become a national concern. Amadou Kante, a participant from iAfrica TV, encourages fellow journalists to promote peace while disseminating information. I think the media have a very, very fundamental role to play in this because we are giving out information to the public. So we need to be very careful and know what to give out, what to tell, uh, and how to spread out information to the public. You know, we all, before being a journalist, you are a citizen, and I think that is important uh, to make sure that we consider that and uh, remember that whatever we do, we need to know that it's Gambia that we have, and we want to uh, do whatever possible to maintain the peace and stability. Through this training, participants are expected to benefit from the knowledge, lessons, and experience from various experts to build the capacity of the media, resolve injustice in non-violent ways, and to transform the structural conditions that generate deadly conflicts. For QTV News, I am Fadusi Sanya. From that story, we will go for a short commercial break. Still to come, we have more stories to stay tuned. Looking for the fastest and easiest way to receive money transfers from abroad? Well, Q Money and RIA just made it happen. Now you can receive international money transfer from RIA directly into your Q Money account with no additional cost. 
Once you receive an SMS alert about your transfer, walk into any QMoney agent across the country to receive your payment for free or use the money immediately to buy credit, QPower and other QMoney services. It's fast, safe and convenient. For more info, call Customer Care on 133 QMoney, Sunyu Kalpe. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. Now, the Food Safety and Quality Authority, in collaboration with the Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Health Organization, on Tuesday conducted a validation of the draft procedural manual of the National Codex Committee of the Gambia. I'll be about to see the reports. The National Codex Committee of the Gambia serves as a technical advisory body to the government on food safety and quality and is responsible for all codex activities in the Gambia. The procedural manual sets out the rules of procedure for the National Codex Committee to discharge its responsibility of food control in line with food hygiene and food safety laws. The Director General of the Food Safety and Quality Authority, Momoduba, says the National Codex Manual will play an important role in food security and safety, health of consumers, and sets out guiding practices in the food trade. We had to develop what we call the procedural manual. Because people come and people go, but institutions stay. So, and we want functionality, we want continuity. So it's important to develop this procedural manual so that, um, and of course, all the critical stakeholders would be looking at it and critic it and, van, and look at the things that we think um, we should add or we should remove or we should amend. And eventually we have a document that is uh, driven by the stakeholders. On behalf of the FAO country representative, Faimane highlights the importance of food safety, adding that unsafe food creates diseases and malnutrition. The National Codex Committee, he says, will guide and ensure food safety. In 2018, FSQA, in collaboration with the National Codex Committee and FAO, successfully made an application to the Codex Trust Fund. To, to build this, a strong and sustainable codex system that would allow effective and participation of the Gambia in the work of International Codex Alimentarius Commission. A healthy eating lifestyle is essential to improve human productivity and life expectancy. Momodu Gasama, a health promotion special at WHO, emphasizes the importance of eating good food revealing that unhealthy and unsafe food consumption causes a high mortality rate globally. We and uh, WHO and the Ministry of Health, we have seen that people are not even eating vegetables and foods as we, as we, as we desire, desire it. And food, low income, low intake of food and vegetables alone is costing more than 2 million lives. 2 million lives are lost every year because people are not eating the quantity that they need in terms of fruits and vegetables. So less consumption of that. But again, a lot of people are also getting bigger and heavier and heavier. This is what you call obesity and, 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 and overweight. And that also is waiting for us. Oh, nearly 2.6 million people die as a result of being, having an unhealthy weight. The National Codex Committee ensures the availability of food safety guidelines for industry and consumer protection and provides recommendations to the Food Safety and Quality Authority and to the government of the Gambia. For QTV News, I am Abiba Tusisi. In sports, history was made in Cairo over the weekend as South Africa's Mamelodi Sundowns triumph, triumph over Ghana's Hasekas ladies to be crowned champions of African women's club football and win the inaugural Total Energy Scarf champion, Women's Champions League. More in this report. Although the men's game in African football has had a Champions League or its equivalent since 1964, the women's version of the competition was only launched this year in an eight-team tournament in Egypt. It's time, it's now, was the slogan chosen for the competition. After the preliminary skirmishes, Mamelodi Sundowns and Hazakas Ladies were the two teams that made it through to the final. As they lined up for official photos ahead of the kickoff, the ladies of Hazakas looked determined, and the Sundowns ladies were relaxed and smiling. The two teams had taken contrasting paths to get to the final. Where Hazakas had been free-scoring, 
registering 10 goals in their three matches. Mabinodi Sundowns had two 1-0 wins and a 0-0 draw in their semi-final, which they won 5-3 on penalties. Significantly, Mamelodi did not concede in regulation or extra time in any of their games. In contrast, Azakas let in four over their three games. The final proved worthy of a final, as both teams quickly settled with neither side showing nerves and regularly exchanged possession as they sought a breakthrough. The honour of scoring the first goal in an historic final fell to Morifi with a fine strike, scoring with an assist from Goy in the 33rd minute, which is how it stayed until half-time. In the second half, Hazakas tried to get back on terms but found Sundown's keeper Dlamini in fine form, making a string of impressive saves. In the 65th minute, Mgoi, who provided the assist for the opening goal, grabbed one for herself after another finely worked move. Hazakas had time to get back on terms, but Dlamini would not be beaten. In added on time, Sundown's Regina Mogolola received a red card, but her teammates held on for the 2-0 victory. At the whistle, Sundowns could celebrate a deserved victory and another piece of history as their men's team won the Champions League in 2016. At the post-game press conference, the losing side, Hazakas, had four players named in the team of the tournament as did beaten semi-finalists the impressive Asfar of Rabat, Morocco. The other three players came from winners Mamelodi Sundowns, fitting winners of the maiden edition and a great advert for the women's game. For QTV News, I am Ade Darami. Moving on, the Gambia women's volleyball team training camp in Dubai has ended with a two-week training camp exposing players and the technical team to some of the best facilities and training drills. The team also played against various teams. Our sports reporter, Momodu Gajaga, tells us more. Two weeks of intense training and friendly games for these ladies have exceeded the expectations of the Gambia women's volleyball team players. They trained twice daily with a series of friendly games against local clubs. They described the trip as a success. Upon arrival at the Banjul International Airport, Padu Dusar, the head of delegation, shared his thoughts about the training camp. Thanks to the Almighty through Tijan Dete that facilitated this trip to be successful. I am saying, giving him saying a big thank you. Definitely, he did have done extremely well. Tijan, we all know him from football. Why, since he was appointed as a sports ambassador. He doesn't see anywhere other than volleyball. And we are very happy about that. As part of the training camp, 13 players were selected, most of whom had never been exposed to high-level training in a high-quality indoor volleyball court. For the players, it was a lifetime experience and a first opportunity to prepare better for future competitions, both domestically and internationally. Here is Fatumata S. Jame, captain of the team. The players, we have gained a um, lot of um, skills from our coaches. We have learned so much from our coaches. And looking at the test matches that we have had, it has also boosted up our, um, our level when it comes to the volleyball um, training. So it was a very great experience. We had to meet a lot of people. We had um, our training, which was very um, good. Our coaches were there to support us. So yes, it was a very good one for us. After the two weeks of training, Coach Lamin Elef Baji, head of the team's technical department, says the training camp has given the players an opportunity to perform better. He says he has great expectation of the players to perform better in their clubs. First of all, the exposure of these young players, you know, experiencing playing with the top class players has put uh, so much uh, great confidence in them uh, towards the game and then it has put that feeling and that form in them and then which I believe has uh, put up a, a great achievement on us. Gambia sports ambassador Tijan Jete, who facilitated the training camp with his partners, the General Authority of Sports of the United Arab Emirates, expressed satisfaction, saying he wants to see the country's athletes thriving in various sports. Training camp in the training camp in the future pour le volleyball de Gambia. Le team est venu à ce moment-là de Monaco pour nous équiper team bien as long as possible pour que nous ayons beaucoup d'exposition internationale. Host of the Gambian team, 
the United Arab Emirates General Authority of Sport, says they found it good to partner with the sports ambassador of the Gambia volleyball team and hoped their cooperation will bring greater good for both countries. Hassan Al Ramshi spoke on behalf of the UAE General Authority of Sports. Having seen how the women's volleyball team has benefited, it is hoped other Gambian athletes will get similar opportunities. Mumudu Gajaga, QTV News. Before we end, here's a recap of our main headlines. There has been a dramatic turn of events in the Gambia's presidential race. Dr. Ismaila Sise of the Citizens Alliance, one of the candidates disqualified by the Electoral Commission, won the case against his disqualification and is entitled to run. The NPP-led Grand Coalition on Tuesday resumed its election campaign tour in the Fonyi West Coast region. The Office of National Security and the Ministry of Interior and Partners on Monday organized a peace and election forum for grassroots communities. A five-day training course for journalists on the role of media in peace building and conflict prevention in elections was organized on Monday by the Point newspaper and partners. In sports, history was made in Cairo over the weekend as South Africa's Mami Lodi Sundowns triumph over Ghana's Hasekas ladies to be crowned champions of African women's club football. Well, that's it from me and thank you for watching.